I have a question. Yes. Um, so what, in your opinion, is the best way to um, to bring the energy up? Do you use a breathing exercise or do you visualize the energy coming up to the crown of the head? Well, you know, you, you use the breathing technique. Uh, it's really key to the whole experience of Kundalini rising to be centered with your mind in the chakra below the navel. I can't repeat this often enough <clears throat> because Kundalini is an extremely powerful energy. And if you're not focused and if you're not rooted and grounded inside yourself, it's an energy that could really, in many ways, do damage to a person. So the whole training and what Rudy taught when I'm teaching is to get your mind focused below the navel, draw, you know, bring five or ten percent of your attention to the base of the spine, draw the energy through the sex to the base of the spine, and it will activate Kundalini. I mean, you don't have to even you can, you know, you can visualize things, but uh, it's not necessary. If you just do the exercise as it's being taught, it will act as, as a means of truly activating Kundalini. The energy, to activate Kundalini, energy needs to go through the sexual area. In the sexual chakra, as I've said at least a thousand times, you know, there's the union of the male-female principle inside a human being. That union of the male-female, it gives birth to Kundalini. And then Kundalini will rise, and Kundalini is truly the pathway to enlightenment. So you don't really have to visualize anything, but you need to have your attention focused below the navel. Certainly the heart needs to be open, the mind needs to be quiet and then drawing the energy through the sex chakra by bringing a piece of your attention to the base of the spine. It's the fundamental exercise that Rudy taught and that I teach, and it will activate Kundalini, but you have to be certain, and I honestly say this again and again, that you're grounded inside, you're rooted inside. The core chakra is open, and there's a lot of strength there, so that when Kundalini is activated, you have the capacity, you know, to allow it to do what it does without having it tip you off balance. And another element to this also, which is very important, I mean, Kundalini is a very powerful energy. And living in day-to-day -day life, the objective world is also a very powerful energy spiritual energy, God, whatever one wants to call that, Shakti, it's very powerful energy. You know, so we all know living in this world, uh, we're dealing with so many circumstances that are very draining and tense and crazy with a lot of insanity. That we need to be rooted inside. We need to be rooted to activate Kundalini we need to be rooted to be able to live our lives every day without life throwing us off balance. We need to be rooted inside in order to draw down higher creative energy. Because higher creative energy, as I've said also a lot, you know, it's like in the Bhagavad Gita when Krishna reveals himself to Arjuna, as if the light of a thousand suns suddenly appeared in the sky. It's extremely powerful energy. And if you're not rooted, if the mind isn't focused and rooted in the, and open that the chi, that chakra below the navel, you understand between the intensity of life, the intensity of Kundalini, you know, and the intensity of spiritual energy, we would burn up, you know, like cinders, you know? So the exercise is extremely important 
And the learning how to build foundation and getting grounded is the key to the mastering of what Rudy taught. And it's also the key to enlightenment, it's the key to healing, it's the key to you know, living in our everyday lives. But we have to deal with not only our own intensity and tension, but the tension of many, many people that come in and out of our lives. So it's, you know, there's three elements. There's spirit, Shakti, there's life, you know, and there's Kundalini. And all of those elements are contingent upon the core chakra being open. If the core chakra is open, then we can just through gratitude open the heart. And there's joy, there's love. We truly have learned the reason for life which is to be full of joy and love. And all of this works together. Thank you. I know I sometimes sound like a broken record, but it's really important to repeat this. Because this is the key to everything Rudy taught, everything that I teach. It's the key. God is love. Well, how are you going to open your heart and feel gratitude and love and compassion if you don't have the strength inside to do it? Everybody talks about inner peace. Well, how do you get inner peace? How do you quiet the mind? Unless you have the strength inside to be able to do it. And that's how Kundalini will get activated and it will sustain your journey to God because you have the inner strength to allow that force of energy, that very intense force of energy, you know, to guide you into the cosmos and to a place that's outside of time and space. To, a, you know, a state of spiritual enlightenment. Does anyone else have a question? You know, don't ever be afraid to ask basic questions because it always seems to come out of me in a different way. <laughs> From the last time I have changed and the energy flows differently. And it's it's almost like every time I say it, it's the first time I've ever said it, you know? They're very interesting. Does anyone else have a question? Here we go. Question, Stuart. Chris? Yes, Chris. In your book, Moving On, I've been just fascinated with reading about how you describe three ways of using tension. First is to bring it into the hara. And second is to use it in your everyday life, in your profession. And third is to surrender it, you know, by dropping tension. And I'd really like you to talk about how to use it in your everyday life, in your professional work. Look, everything, you know, Everything you see around you, everything that's created in this world is a product of human tension. Mm. It's people investing their tension. And generally, it's a chase for money that mm -hmm. creates all of these incredible technological. I mean, I sit in, in the car, you know, and I listen to this GPS thing. It's just it, it's just staggering to me. Why was it invented? So somebody could make billions of dollars. Yeah. And at the same time, it's, you know, it's just an amazing invention that, I mean, it's kind of making everyone brain dead and nobody knows how to get anywhere anymore. <laughs> but, it, it yeah. really, but it really is something unbelievable. 
that there's some voice up in the sky that tells you the next street is so and so and make a right turn. Uh -huh. You know, uh, that's how people's tension is used to create these things. Uh -huh. And most people don't know how to internalize their tension so they can build a chakra system with it and use it to develop an inner life that gets them connected with spirit. So the tension is thrown out into the world and it creates all these extraordinary things. Oh. It also creates war. It creates, you know, the madness in the world, you know, prejudice, racial prejudice. Mm -hmm. It creates all kinds of insanity in the world because there isn't that centeredness inside, that building of a system that's connected with spirit. That's how tension works. So when I say use it in the world, use it to build your life. I you see. Have a career, you have, you know, you need to make money, you need to have family, relationships. Use it and use it with love, with compassion, with, you know, forgiveness, with openness inside yourself. So that the use of that tension doesn't destroy other people. Mm -hmm. At the same time, it will accomplish what you need to have a, you know, the only thing that stops people of accomplishing anything in this world is themselves. It's really true. You get past yourself and the whole world opens up. That's clear. That's really clear. Thank you. Of course, there's many ways to use tension, God bless, you know, and mostly is used. <laughs> it's the madness of the world, you know, that's how tension is used. And there are dark elements in the world. And when people are not open, those dark elements use people to create madness in the world. I mean, you call it the devil, you call, whatever you call it, but there are those kinds of elements in the world and energies in the world. And they use people who are not open, who spend half their, 90% of their time in their heads. They're angry, they're, they're, they're you know, they, they're imperious, they want power over everybody. You know, they're Trumps, you know, they're that those kind of people. That energy uses them to create havoc in the world. Wars, Putin, you know, wars start because of the craziness in the minds of people. And that dark energy uses them to create that kind of insanity. So our work is to get the heart open and to interact with life, with love, with compassion, without fear with security inside and allow our tension instead of creating insanity in the world, let it build wonderful things. You know? Thank you. You're welcome. Does anyone else have a question? Okay, if there are no more questions, then there'll be meditation on Wednesday evening. Looking forward to seeing you all. Thursday is Thanksgiving, so I don't think there's not going to be a meditation on Thursday. There's too much turkey and too much food. And <laughs> Listen, you know, I love you all here, and I, I'm always open for new students to come, especially people that have a sincere need for a spiritual life. And if you know people like that, you know, I'm, this is not a private club here. You know, it's really open to anyone who truly, and, and I always find out I need to get 50 students to get three good ones, you know? <laughs> I mean, it's really true. <laughs> it's been true all my life. So if you know people that are interested, you know, not just anybody off the street or, you know, and, and I'm not here running a psychiatric clinic, you know, for people that are down and out and, you know, and that's not what it's about, but people that really want a spiritual life. 
that uh, have a need for it. And, you you know, by their very presence, you can tell that they could be unhappy. They could be, you know, in any kind of condition, you know, but the, the need has to be there. And, it, you know, people, I'm really open. As I say, I'm not running a private club here. And it has to be open because when new people come, they bring energy that makes all of us grow. So if you know people like that, don't be shy, you know, you, but don't go looking for them. Don't become the preacher of Kundalini Yoga on a soapbox, you know, somewhere in <laughs> some street corner. You know, if it just happens, let it happen. Okay, God bless you all. Thank you. And I can't tell you how grateful I am to be here. Thanksgiving, you know, Thanksgiving should be celebrated every day because every day is a gift and every day is sacred. Every one of you is sacred and every one of you is a gift in my life. So God bless you all and thank you. And I'm looking forward to seeing you. <laughs> thank you. Good night. Good night. Thank you very much. Happy Thanksgiving. Thank you.